Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunker down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of What a Horse. Yes, sir. And it's a... What, what's that on you? How much did James Wilson pay you to slip that in? I just want him to give me a nice comment when I see him next time. He ain't going to do it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I can hear him now. I, I really want for Eli. That's, that's oh, it's for yeah. Eli, not, Eli, not for James. No, not well, for James. Eli. In, in that case, yeah. I, won't, I won't rag you too He didn't want to give me the head, so I figured uh, I'd put it on. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Your deal. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry. World Grand Champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000. Or select Amateur Show Pleasure World Grand Champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. I fell in love with Tennessee from the second that I saw it. From the beautiful rolling hills to the beautiful rivers and streams, the ecosystem and the wildlife are awesome here. But it needs constant care, and that means picking up litter and trash every single chance you get. It's totally polluting the ecosystem, totally polluting the natural resources, and it's a big hazard for our local wildlife. Please join NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and join me in keeping Tennessee beautiful and keeping this part of our great legacy. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. James, I'll at least buy you lunch. <laughs> I'm gonna tell I you. I might pass out if you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Friday night and Saturday night this week, Julie Ground putting on Walking for Angels. Start times five o'clock. Judges are Jordan Kate Cardale, Lane Leverett, and Ryan Parker. Oh Lane. I got to give him credit, buddy. He's tough now. He, yes, he, he is. Put up that record. There's also a, uh, a, a GoFundMe page out for, for Lane. So yes. Everybody look it up and uh, help help Lane out. Well, I dumped that one. Help Lane out on what what he's doing. Uh, Christmas in July is starts Tuesday night, and I'm gonna tell you, Carol Misseldine has gone above and beyond what anything. Uh, Christmas in July starts at 4.30 Tuesday. If you need information, call Carol at 919-437-6597. Again, start time 4.30. Judges are Dean Baird, Mike Hilly, and Alan McQuarrie. 
Money Tree Classic, July the 5th. It's going to be at uh, Cooper Still Arena. Call Kerry Tisma, 678-576-1290. Start time is 4 p.m. Judges, Scotty Brooks, Jamie Lawrence, and Amy Trimble. And then we get to see Dale Watts in Woodbury, Tennessee. Woodbury Lions Club in Woodbury. Contact Shane Cannon, 615-904-4395. Start time is 5 p.m. And judge is Dale Watts. He's a good one. You know, I'm going I'm going back to this Christmas in July now. This, this one, Walking for Angels, is going to be a good one this weekend. They got three good judges. But this one that Carol Misseldine is putting on, she has four different novice classes. Man. That's hey, a good deal. Well, I'm going to tell you, she is creating an avenue for more people to get in the ring. ring yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we might want one of them's all day pleasure, I believe. So yeah. you, we might want to show the little filly. That'd be that'd be something good in there, and that that'd be a good that'd be a good class. But it's just uh, the fact that people are trying to create avenues to get more people in. The show room. Yeah, involved in and, it. And that's right. To me, that that's that's a super good thing. Now, let's get down to business. Uh, there are some things that really disturb me. Everybody knows that that when I watch the USDA abuse the Horse Protection Act for their own benefit and the USDA, it it really bothers me. But there are some people that you know that say, well, we don't want to attack other breeds. And I agree with that. I, I don't agree with it, but I believe in repaying a favor. And when they stand out there and they accuse us of doing things that we know they are doing, yes, it gets old. Now, the saddlebreds, they have their thing that they do. Even quarter horses, yes. all of them. They, they have different things that they do, but all of them want to point to the Tennessee walking horse. And to be quite honest, the Tennessee walking horse is the only equine industry that polices itself and does a very good job of it while we are being invested, or not invested, but inspected by someone that would put that out. Yeah. Now that goes to show just how corrupt the USDA is. Someone's got that kind of website out that they attack the Tennessee walking horse, but yet Amy Adams is inspecting horses. Now, what kind of a fair deal are we going to get when that's going on? You're, you're right about that. You know, I tell you, if you do a survey, and I pretty much right on this. If you do a survey of all veterinarians, how many injections and how many crippled things they have in between the walking horses or any other breed, and I guarantee you walking horses is low on that totem pole than any other breed that's out there. We already know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's been done. And yeah. we know that, that it's not, the, the Tennessee walking horse has spent, since well, since 1970, over 50 years of cl cleaning up what was done in the past. Yes. And that's why we're still being attacked what was happening back in the 60s and in the early 70s. We're still being attacked for that today. We're not being attacked for what goes on today. If we were, then we would not have a problem with them creating and in violations. And we wouldn't have a, a problem with one veterinarian seeing what they find. Yes. But when they find things that no other veterinarian can find, it kind of goes back to that same old scenario of, well, there's a scar here, even though it's only two or three cells thick, which has two big words, words on it, and they start with BS. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all it is. And if, if I was wrong, I'm sure they would, they would have already called me, but they haven't. They haven't said a word about what I, I say because everything I have said is the truth. It's no, I mean, it, it's no, you can't make this stuff up. That, that's a fact. You go out there and you watch, if it takes one VMO six minutes to inspect a horse that another VMO can do 
in less than a minute and you look at what they put on their website about how fast and thorough they are with their inspections and how ethical they are, but then you turn around and you watch them in the inspection area and you watch what they do, you watch while they squeeze a horse's leg, you watch all of this and you know that that video they put out is a bald face lie. You know, the USDA should do a lot better background check on people that they hire to do this they job. They should. Right here. You know, you got an important job. You do a lot of background check. You can't take a person that got a federal offense or whatever and give them a, a, a state job. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? So yeah. what I'm saying is if you're going to get somebody like the Amy, Amy Adams and stuff like that and she got that page out, you know, to, you know she got to be biased. Well, yes, yeah, she's biased. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it, 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 it's if you a against shame. something, don't like something, you know, you right. got to be. That's that's like, and and it's like t t telling somebody that hey, we know this guy's a thief. We know that that he will do anything for money, but we're gonna put him over here watching your money. Yeah. They ain't a one of those that would do that, not a one. But they're willing to put someone like that overseeing us to where when you look at it and you watch what she does, and I videoed her, I'll be videoing her some more, I guarantee you. And I can point out what she does wrong. I can, I mean, you can see it. You, you can watch her when she inspects a horse and you can tell what she's doing. It's the same thing with with the other one. She does it too. And you can watch what they do. They're trying to create a response. They're not looking for a violation. They're looking to cause a violation. There's a difference. And if they're that unethical, and that's all you can say about it, to me, if uh, they, they, they feel pretty good in their position about uh, not being, you cannot sue them individually. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm really not thinking about suing them because in all honesty, in the back of my mind, I keep thinking every time they turn down a horse that there's really nothing wrong with the horse. They just don't want the horse to show or they want to prove they can turn down any horse or just tonight I feel like turning down a bunch they're in effect fixing a horse show. Yes. Because this is competition. If you deplete the competition, then you're fixing a horse show. And you're doing it for a reason. They're doing it, number one, to get paid. But I think there's a little bit more to it because I, I cannot see anybody that just enjoys causing the problem that they do. I mean, it, it just, somehow in, in me, I, I just say, what kind of person would do that? If uh, I'm the same way with somebody that abuses an animal. If, if they abuse an animal, I ain't got no use for them. The way they do people and treat us as individuals especially in that inspection area where they know that they got all the power no matter what happens. We could have equine vets back there and they would do the same thing. If you remember several years ago, every horse that went up for inspection had already passed an inspection by an equine veterinarian, a licensed equine veterinarian. And they still turned down horses, said, nope, that's not the way we see it. We don't want the horse to show. You turn down this horse right here and you say, well, he's got a scar. Only problem is nobody can find it. Well, he's got inflammation. Only problem is nobody else can find it. Yes. Uh, well, we can't get him on that, but he's got a scar. He's got some kind of scar right up here under his knee. Y'all must have done something to him to cause that. So we're going to write one on it. I seen where they, they rode up a flat shot horse because he stepped on himself. Uh, and I'm talking about hit itself up high. It wasn't down low, it was up high. Yeah. But they wanted to include, they, they go out of their way to create a problem 
where there is no problem. And to me, that's no different than speed traps, no different than embezzlement, because you, you are costing the trainer, the owner, owner yeah. the show, you're costing everybody money. So what does that make you? Does that make you any better than a thief? If you're doing the same thing they are, just in a different way, you go in there and you, just like that. Now, th that ain't the way they describe the way they inspect the horse. There's a major difference in the way they yes. inspect the horse and what they said they do or what they want the public to believe they do. I've had more people email me or call me and say, I just saw this. Do they really do that? And my answer to one of them, which was a lady who was trying to get pretty spiffy, saddlebred lady, she said, I don't believe they actually do that. I said, did you see the video? I said, what part of that didn't you understand? My, my, my biggest argument is this, like we showed last week on the show, is the difference in between when they check the saddle bread and they check the walking horses. Major and difference. I mean, it's a, it's a big difference. I mean, you had movement. And everything else, it's like you see movement right there yeah. on that horse right there. Now, you tell me what's the difference in between a walking horse moving that way and that horse moving that way? Well, they, if don't, you want say the, 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 they don't want to turn that one down. But they, they say if a walking horse moves that way, they say that he's got a violation or whatever. Yeah. But they let that horse show. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, a horse is a horse. You spell right. horse the same way. I don't care what he is, but he's still a horse. Well, it's just it's like I said last week. I'll say it this week. I'll say it next week. And if they ask me, I'll tell them to their face. A damn lie is nothing but a damn lie, and they are guilty of it. Guilty is all sin. They know they are. They know what they do is not right. They just don't care. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I hate to be so, so rude about it, but all you got to do is watch video. All you got to do is watch them inspect a the horse, and you'll know. You're right. So, all right, let's start watching some horses. This, this is the good part of it. This was the Jamboree. Mystic Jazz and Allie Mystic Joe Jacobs. Jazz and Allie Perfect. Joe and I, 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 I still brag about that because I think that's fantastic. That is fantastic. That horse looks up in the brow right there, look ahead. I mean, Laurie does a real good job training that horse. Oh, Jake's walking and, around out there trying to learn something. Yeah, <laughs> and Allie Joe is doing a good job presenting that horse. Allie Joe will teach you. I, I, I give a lot, a lot of credit to Laurie Team. Yes. BB does a good job on showing that horse right there. That's a nice, real nice horse. The country lineman and BB Beasley for Beth Beasley of Athens, Alabama. The country lineman and BB Beasley breaks on the blue. All right, I just got from Julie Graham about the horse show going on Friday and Saturday this week, her show, and uh, Johnny Puckett will be replacing Lane Leverett, because Lane has just got, I was questioning that. Yeah. It'll be hard. Thank you, Julie. Right, right, right here's a good one. Jose's Desperate Man and Caressa yeah. Mills. Yes. She is a piece of work now. And that horse is a good one. That is a nice horse, real nice horse. What, this lady can flat right. She can. Caressa does a good job, and I'm going to tell you. I mean, she, she does a... A, a real pleasant job. person to talk to. I always have a smile on the face. She's ready to ride. You know. Well, now, now yeah. we got him on the show. We yeah. got him ball cap, and now we got him on the show. Yakety yak and Eli Cunningham. For Brittany and Eli Cunningham. They wouldn't even let Johnny put his name on it. Hey, you don't. <laughs> I understand. 
they took the horse completely away from him. But Eli done, done a good job with this horse right here. Hey, he did. I, I thought he made an excellent show. First time out on that horse. Yes. I thought he did excellent. Done a good job. Boy, Eli, buddy, he, he's a heck of a rider. Yep. And here, I'm going to tell you what, this young man, Daniel Smith, I think he, he is, they're going to hear a lot from him. Oh, yeah. Now they are, because this boy can flat ride a horse. To John O. And Daniel Schmidt on this class. Yeah, that's really something. Uh, Johnny Puckett stepping up and replacing Lane. That's that's a good thing because I'm on. I had questions about Lane, but I just think he'd have been in a lot of pain. Lane is in a lot of pain. I, I try to talk to him at least once a day. You know. I wish a lot of people send prayers out to him and help him out. You know, it's Lane's a good guy. He is. Right here to draw the line and Robert Dort. Come on, this was the first time Robert showed this horse. He just bought him. And uh, I thought he did an excellent job. Yeah, he did do a good job on that horse. Robert's mother's always got that smile. Oh, yeah. Draw a line and Robert Deutsch to the blue. Quite an honor in Maxine Beasley for Beth Beasley, your champion youth championship winner. I love it, Mary. That mare was was a real nice mare. She's tough. She's tough. They got a uh, GoFundMe page out for Lane, and and which I, I like those GoFundMe pages, but I'm gonna suggest people just ride by and drop a check in his mailbox. Yeah. That way, I know GoFundMe they get a percentage of it. That way. Every penny of your money is going to go to help help Lane. Yeah, and I, I think that that a hundred, two hundred dollar check, whatever, just whatever you can afford, just drop it by to him. Right there, T Time Charlie. Yeah, she says that she is the pro in that outfit, <laughs> and she wants them to know it. See, the pro always goes the, the second yeah. way. That's what she told Jake. I thought that was pretty cool. And you know Jake's going the first way, don't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that girl right there is something else. I'll tell you what, Jerry, that 11 underclass. It's getting tough. It, I'm going to tell you, it I, is. It is getting very tough. Very tough. It's getting this real tough. in Belfast, it got hot. And it, it's going to get a lot hotter. Yep. Because, I mean, these these kids are flat riding horses now. They're not messing around. No, they're not. You see just as good horse in that 11 month class you see in any classes out there. That's a fact. Yep. I mean, a bunch of good ones. Here we go. Walking for cancer. Goes to entry number 554, Dahal. Here she Allie is, Da Hoss and Allie Jo Jacobs. Jacobs. Da Hoss, 554 is your blue ribbon winner. Every one of these classes, now this is youth pony. It, it's a tough class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good ponies out there. Seems like every time you look up, Give her a, smile. a parent, a grandparent, ain't her an uncle, getting them a horse. The and next thing you know, a niece, a nephew, yes, right. a grandchild, a wife, done took it away from them. Mm -hmm. But the, the youth are the ones that are the big ones. They're, they're taking them horses right and left. Well, a lot of these people are buying these 
open horses to show an open class that's good and broke and putting the kids on them and putting yep. and making good show of horses with them. But there's the rail. Samantha Green and Wayne, Wayne Wilson. Guido. Yeah, that's why I say everybody knew him as Guido. <laughs> Called him right. I tell you what, that's like to having two pros riding your horse right yeah, there. Yeah. Uh huh. Samantha, she she was born in the saddle. I yeah. Think. Like that Durrell, walk he is, he's a nice horse. So proud from Miss Virginia. Now she's a diehard horse person now. Oh, she loves them. She does. Right there's title defense. It's another one of Virginia's horses. Yeah. I tell you what, they're good ones. No doubt about it. They can get it done. Get that steady flat walk going. Right for the Evergreen Walking Horse Farm of Bell Buckle. Zorro Jr. Right there, Zorro Jr. Right. Come on, Tim. That class right there had three Zorro exceptionally yep, good horses. You're right. In it. And it, me, it was just one of those classes that you could just about reach in there and grab any of them, and you wouldn't have been wrong. Yeah. But now Bev done a good job on this horse right here. That horse got a lot of motion to him right yeah, there. He does. And Bev does a good job riding him. Well trained. Yep. Well trained. All right, I guess the next place we're going to go is going into East Tennessee. Here's your mighty mischievous in Jackson Latham for Shane Porterfield. I'll tell you what, that young man does a good job. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. He's, he's getting better and better, but now you notice he's doing the lead line. He's doing it all. Yeah. Cousin Bob and Shane Porterfield. I thought Shane did an outstanding that, job. He did. That is a, I really did. That's a nice horse right there, Cousin Bob. Yeah, horse. Shane ain't had him long, but he told me, he said, hey, we'll get to know each other. Yep. That's the main thing. People get to know their horse. Right here is the Dixie Giant in Jackson Latham for Shane Porterfield. They haven't had this horse hardly any time. You know how they got it? How they end up getting it? Trade the car for him. Oh, okay. Shane had an old car, so uh -huh. he traded it. <laughs> he said that car wouldn't have brought $2,500 for that horse brand board. Yeah. <laughs> Made a smart move. I told him he got the best end of the deal. Man. So that's a pretty nice horse right there. It is a nice horse. That, that's, that's funny. You, you find all kinds of deals. We got them that you traded a bag of sawdust that's for. It, it. <laughs> you get a little bit of everything, yep. and then you just get better and better. better. Mm -hmm. All right, it's your, your deal now. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go.
All right. Well, we're going to go to the Belfast show. And you know, they 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 didn't have a, a ton of horses, but they had some quality horses. Yes. Now they did. They had some real top quality. And nowadays, I'm gonna tell you, with the way the USDA is, and you have a horse show, it's uh it's something else just to get it done. This was your wingling class. I like to show these wingling classes. I wish more people thought of them as I do and, and advertised them more. But the Rhythm Nation and Robert Nams took the blue for Jeremy Bridges. Honor me with good time, Rachel Doris, Rhymer and Doris. Ambushed at the border, John Doris, or John Doris. And Rear One's Due Diligence. Karen Harden finished out the ribbons for John Hale. But this is one time that the daughter beat the father. That Rhythm Nation horse is a real nice little coat there. Yeah. And there's some good, good quality coats out there. Just like this class right here. Here, I can remember when we first started, what a horse that they'd be 23, 24 horses yeah. to mm -hmm. a class. And people just don't do it like they used to. But I'd, I'd love to see it out there where you had them just flooded. I mean, you couldn't hardly, it's like our 11 and under class. I'm, there's, I've got a video back there, 2004, where when they would come up the East Grandstands, you couldn't even see the track. Yeah. There was so many of so them. So many in there. We just had so many people attack this industry, All right. trying to destroy it and, and not caring if it was telling the truth or not. They just had an objective and they figured, well, that's collateral damage. All the businesses, collateral damage. The education funds, yeah, collateral damage. And that's, that's the way some people think. As long as it doesn't hurt them, they're okay with it. That's why I'm a firm believer that all these other breeds that think we're the only ones that need to be attacked, I think it's time that, that we started really posting out there what is what. But, mm -hmm. They always said the best thing to hide what you're doing is blame it on somebody else. Yeah. And that's what they've been doing. Things that they've done, they want to blame on us. I had one lady that does the saddle bread was telling me all this stuff and, and I asked her, I said, well, you know where we got that idea? She said, where? And I said, saddle bread. Well, you know that's all I said, look it up. Check it out. Yeah. Got people down there where you're at, ask them. It's common knowledge. Look at there. Nice holes. Tell you what, Robert does a good job of this. Oh okay. yeah. Now that, John Doris and his daughter do a good job of it too. And and you can always bet that, that Karen Hard Harden's gonna do a good job. Here's your yearling class. Bravo Jose. And Robert Nims for Jack Heffington. That's your buddy, eh? Mm-hmm. You got a wingling for him. Teeny B Bikini. Marty Warren for Denise Smith. Blanche Devereaux. Chase Williams for Charles Johnson. Genuine Jose, Dr. Cyril Wilkinson Buchanan. And for Dolly's honor, Brian Buchanan. B Buckman, I'm sorry. Brian Buckman for Dr. Cyril Wilkerson.
This was a nice class too. With yeah, what? Nice horses. And yearlings. Yep. Yeah. People braving the heat. Yes. Look at old Jack out there. I know he's hot. Oh yeah. I tell you the, the funniest thing about this show right here. The show started at six o'clock. Uh -huh. I got there around about five o'clock and it wasn't a horse trail out there, but about two. Right? And I'm like, man, ain't nobody gonna show up. And I'm gonna tell you about 5.30, it was mm -hmm. like somebody opened the gates. I mean, it was just piling. Everybody coming in. Everybody was coming in. Well, they, they didn't want to face the heat. <laughs> they yeah. wanted to put it off as long as possible. Jack been around these horses for years yes. and years. Mm -hmm. That's a nice one Marty's got there. Jack is another person that everybody keeps in their, keep, keep him in their prayers. What happened to him? Well, I mean, he'd been sick and battling oh. the cancer and stuff like that, oh. you know. So. You know, I did not realize that. Yeah, but I mean, he's... Yeah, because Jack's a good dude he, now. Jack he really is, is. is a real good guy. There's Chase. Chase liked them horses, too. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. i tell you what, Chase Williams, it, it, he, he is politically correct 90% yeah. of the time. Mm-hmm. Now, right here, is when things got hot. This was one heck of a class, buddy, and I mean the competition was right. Dixie Majorette and Carlisle Goldman, and I think that's the way she says her name, but I'm not sure. For Joseph Goldman took the blue. Cole Hahn, Allie Joe Jacobs was reserved. I'm a mastermind, Wilder Way. Good time, BKT, Boston Kate Tillman. And the high line, Turner Parker finished out the ribbon. But now, look at there. This was a class, Colham was reserved. This Dix, Dixie Majorette, I'm, I'm telling you, this whole thing is getting yeah. tighter and tighter and tighter. These kids, and these kids can ride. Oh yeah. Now they ain't messing around. Wilder tickles me now. He's got that hat pulled down on them eyes and he's paying attention. Oh yeah, he is. <laughs> now, but it, it just, the, the kids, I, I love to watch them. I love to watch them because they're, they're competitive as all get out. Gonna be tough. Oh yeah. And then we and, and Eli wasn't even there. Yeah. Right there, Cole Hahn and Ali Joe Jacobs. For Ali Joe, you youth it. Let me under reserve winner. When that horse is reserved, you know it was tough. It's tough. You are exactly right. This wouldn't be what a horse we didn't have Ali Joe on. Right here, three-year-old Marion Gilding class. And I like his name. Now that's all right, Mama. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sam Martin for Floyd Sherman. Red Ferrari, Tyler Balcom, Carolina Equine Farms. Carolina Equine Farms. Mama's Money, Bill Calloway for Denise Smith. Charlie's Lucky Lady, Knox Blackburn, Pat and Sue Harrington. And Dazzling Chew, Mitch Taylor for Hagen Carter finished out the ribbon. But now that's all right, Mama. <laughs> I like that. Too. Oh yeah. Someone coming up with these names. I'm just not sure who it is. <laughs> they get more creative with these names in that. They do. Yeah. A lot more creative. Every time you turn around, you, you're coming up with a different one. Maggie Moore 
is dead on the money on a bunch of hers. Sam made a real good ride on that horse right there. He did. Right there. Tell you what, good riders out there. Yeah. But your boys out there, so they got they got some more talent, man. Yeah. That was a pretty good class of um, yeah. three-year-old Marion Gillings right there. Yes, it was. A good class. That's a pretty sight right there, too. I see Mitch Taylor out there, and yeah. Mitch back in the saddle again. Mitch used to be a trainer back in the days. Right here, amateur three-year-old Marion Gillings. This was a class now. I'm sitting there watching, and Bob Adcock on I'm the Boss Lady, uh -huh. a flat walking yes. fool. I mean, made a real good it show. Done. Bob Adcock was in the saddle for Ashley Young. The Red Dragon, Shannon Hard. That was another good horse. Right yeah. there he is. He's John Daly, Christy Warner. Call me Samsonite. Stephanie Richardson and mighty persuasive Caroline Sales finished out the ribbon. Daniel Smith was in there on a, yeah. a, what I thought was a good one, pretty consistent, but look there. I mean, that's just flat walking, timed up, oh, yeah. getting it done. I'm gonna have to ask Mr. Bob next time I see him, do he ever get to see the track? Cause every horse he shows, head is right there up in the air. I'm <laughs> right between his I eyes. See, if you ever ride a horse <laughs> that you can look over his head, you wouldn't know what to do. So every one he have his head is up in, is up high. I tell you what, he was on a good one that night. Yes. The boss lady was plumb good. And I like Shannon's horse. Yes, Shannon had a good horse. Christy done a good job. Yep. I was a ring full of good horses there. Hey, you couldn't, you couldn't down, knock any of them. There's Daniel. Right there she is. I'm the boss lady and Bob Adcock. Amateur three-year-old Marion Gildin winner. Tell you what now, that's nice. Yeah. We get a lot of real good mares. It is a bunch of good mares. Really good mares. Like way she uses her back end. Right. Well, I guess we'll, if you do your stuff, we'll come back and then we'll go right back to our final That'll section. Work. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee walking horse champion. The Tennessee walking horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee walking horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. 
If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. All right, welcome back. I'll remind everybody that Lane Leverett has been replaced by Johnny Puckett for the show this weekend over in Lewisburg. So uh, Julie Lambert called, or Julie Graham called a few minutes ago to let us know that she was uh, had just got made the arrangement with Johnny to replace Lane, which I know Lane's in a lot of pain, and I hate that he ain't going to get to yeah. to judge, but uh, Lane's a good judge. Yes. Johnny will, Johnny will fill his shoes. I'm, I'm sure he'll fill his shoes and, and do a good job. So we're going to go back to Belfast, watch a little bit more video of some good horses. That one thing they had is quality horses. Oh, yeah. Here, show pleasure. This is a tough class. Burbank and John Allen Calloway took the blue. Georgia, Florida line and Tim Smith was reserved for Robert Dorch. Be real, Doug Wilhoyt for Pam Fears. Stretch your dollar, Dan Waddell. And Tabasco Queen, Blaze Picard. Tabasco Queen, that's another name. Stylish horse in there. Yeah. There you go. Doug, you done a real good job yeah. showing that horse. That's a he nice does. horse. It is a nice horse. That was a good class of horses right there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Real good class of horses. They're getting it done, that's for yeah. sure. There's the Tabasco Queen. I don't know who drove, dreamed up that name, but that's pretty spicy. <laughs> Pretty spicy. I'm going to enjoy this because this young lady been getting ready to come back into the show ring. And in all honesty, she made a good show. Mm -hmm. Young Jackson, and this is Aubrey Schmidt. This is Daniel's younger sister. Most people see her out there handing out ribbons and everything, yeah. but she saw everybody else riding, so she decided she wanted to get back in the saddle. Now, she can ride a horse, and from what I'm seeing, she did an excellent job. She did do a real good job. I was really thinking when you watch the video of the class, I was thinking, hey, she's she gonna be up there, but welcome back anyway. Glad you're here. Right here's two year old stallions. This is a Ryder Cup class. 
Ganey and Lake Weaver for Ronnie Loxton took the blue. Bros before Jose, Tim Smith, Tommy and Nancy Mills. He's yesterday's wine, Dan Waddell, Brenda Mormon. I'm Superman, Tanner Burks, Dr. Ann Ray. And GEO, GEO. And Thomas Derrickson for Missy and Tim Johnson. But they, to, Tommy can pick a horse. Yeah. This has to be another one that he picked. Because that, it, that's one thing his wife Nancy said that Tommy can find a, a good horse. Tommy been in the business for a long time, no, too. I know. You know, I, know he, he I mean, they always had some good horses. somebody that can find one that got to make him. Yeah. And then you get it with the right trainer. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it, these horses are on their second or third trainer before they really find the niche. Oh, yeah. Here's two-year-old Marion Gildon. I like his name. Cowgirl Casanova. And Thomas Derrickson for Maria Bobo. Oh, I am, Mariam Kelly for the Allen Ridley family. I'm special, Tanner Burks, Ken Fry. Masters making mischief, Sam Martin. Out of Jose, Tim Smith. That's another Tommy and Nancy Mill yeah. horses. I want to give a shout out to the cameraman. This is CJ. He did. CJ. CJ, he's a, he's a trooper now. He's on the money. Yep. Oh, it was hot. I carried my son over one year, and he put his glasses on the back of his neck, and they, they got so hot they started to melt. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, he said, he said, the sun's melting in glasses. But that was, that was in August. That was the yeah. regular Belfast show. Right here's another good class. Oh yeah, it's a good class. I'm not sure how many actual entries they had, but I know it was well over a hundred because yeah. there was uh, 90 ribbons given. They were some of these classes, they were seven, eight horses. They were seeing the class, that's yeah. right. Right there, he's a three-year-old stallion. Now, this one was tough. Big Charlie and Chad Way took the blue for Brian Reese. Mighty Grays, Link Webb, Charles Glegren. NRA's Red Rider, John Allen Calloway. The Shady Wrist, Nick Plafkin. And honor of my dollar, Cody Wolford finished the ribbon. Oh, Chad Way has a way of sitting in yeah. the seat. Mm -hmm. He looked like someone just melted him and poured him in there. be honest, when I look at him riding, you know he reminds me of? Yeah. Joe Martin. Yeah. <laughs> All right, riders, it's one and walk time. Let them walk on. Quite a few people down there braved oh, the heat yeah. too. 
I coach um, Chad's on the, the nice coat. He is. And it's lineup time, Ryder. Yeah. Follow your ringmaster over to the west rail for the lineup. Kind of have a little hand in on that one. I sold that one as a wink, as a year later. Is it? it? Mm -hmm. To Jack, to Jack. <laughs> you sold it to Jack. Yeah, and then Jack sold it to Brian as he got going. I remember the night why Brian won his World Grand Championship. He's riding by about high five and everybody right, going yeah, down the right. <laughs> Said, well, Somebody grab him in a minute, going to turn him off. <laughs> All righty, I want to remind everybody, Johnny Puckett has replaced Lane Leverett. And uh, again, I'm going to emphasize the fact that if you just ride by Lane's and drop him an envelope off into his mailbox, that uh, that will go straight into Lane's pocket. There won't be no yeah. fee taken out. That's the only thing I got against uh, GoFundMe. They're, they're great. I'm not saying they're not, but if... if 100% of $100 is a whole lot better than 90 or 85%. Yeah, that's right. So, and it, and it goes to help Lane and his family and get Lane back on his feet. And, and that's that's the main thing we want. All right, Friday night, Johnny Puckett will be judging with jo Jordan Cordell and Ryan Parker. Showtime will be 5 o'clock. You can call it Julie Graham, 931-808. 9447. And just because the day we do the show will be the same day that uh, Christmas in July will start, which is Tuesday, call Carol Misseldine, 919 437 9 or 6597. Start time for those, sh those sh classes each night is 4 30. Dean Baird, Mike Hilly, and Alan McQuarrie will be the judges. Then the money tree is going to be at the uh, Cooper Steel Arena. Carrie Tisma, 678-856-1290. Start time is 4. And then we go to Woodbury for the Woodbury Lions Club show. You can call Shane Gannon, 615-904-4395. And my buddy from Mississippi, the coaching, basketball coaching, double dribbling, Dale Watts. <laughs> yep. That's what I'm going to start calling him. Double dribble. Dribble, double dribble. Double That's right. dribble. Hey, he, he's a heck of a coach. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. Congratulations, old Smokey. Because yep. last night they beat one heck of a team, 6-5, to five, and won the national championship for the World Series of college baseball. Good Couldn't deal. be no prouder. Well, I guess we'll see everybody next week. Good luck. Be safe. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winner's circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking. Thank you.